Today, we're going to look at the basic layout of a manual transmission. On this mock-up here, I have my input shaft over here on your right, and my output shaft is over here on the left. Power comes in this way, goes through the gear train, and ends up coming out the output shaft. Now we're going to discuss more detail of how that actually happens at a later session. Right now, I just need to explain the gear ratio flow through this drivetrain. So let's take a closer look at what we're looking at. When we look at this drivetrain, it looks like this shaft goes all the way through the transmission. In actuality, the power goes from this input shaft down to this counter shaft, travels along the counter shaft, and retrieves back up to a gear on the output shaft. This gear on the output shaft is going to be linked to this output shaft via a synchronizer assembly, which looks like this. Now, the synchronizer assembly can slide back and forth one way or another, can slide back and forth to make a gear engagement. That will lock this gear to the output shaft. The synchronizer works in two ways so that I can now disengage this first gear and engage the second gear. Each one of these gears rides on a bearing on the shaft. So if you take a look, you will see they are actually turning at different speeds. And they are different speeds compared to the output shaft. If I hold the output shaft stationary and rotate, you'll notice the synchronizers do not spin. That is because they are part of the output shaft and they are connected and I'm holding the output shaft. You'll also notice that these three gears and actually the fourth gear back here, they are all spinning at different speeds. They're able to spin on this shaft because they are not fixed to the shaft. In fact, they ride on a bearing. You'll also notice that this input gear is turning at a different speed than the rest of the gears. That is because it is a separate item. The counter gear down here is used to counteract the rotational direction. As I turn this input shaft in one direction, the counter shaft turns in the opposite direction, which forces the driven gear on the output shaft to turn in the same rotational direction as the input. If I want to make gear interaction, I need to slide the synchronizer over to lock to the gear. Once I do that, I am unable to hold the output shaft from spinning. I have a gear ratio that takes place between this main drive gear and this cluster driven gear, and I have a second gear ratio taking place between this drive gear down here, which is first drive gear, up to first driven gear. This is a very similar powertrain, only I've taken it off of the housing. This allows me to separate the components. Here, the main shaft will pull off of the counter shaft as it separates. And the point I want to make is it looks like this is one solid shaft. In actuality, this front shaft, which is my input shaft, this pulls off separately. So this is an actual separate item here. So here we can see, there's my input shaft right there. And this is an actual separate item. And the main shaft or output shaft is this unit right here. And there's a bearing that sits right here. This is a little front main shaft bearing. And it slides on this input shaft. Now this is a hardened polished surface. So that bearing rides right on there in that fashion. And if we were to put it on the inside of the input shaft, it would fit down inside the input shafts like this. It would fit inside the input shaft. Then it would simply slide onto the main shaft. This allows this gear or input shaft to turn independently of the main shaft, allowing it to turn at different speeds. And as I pull this off, you can now see that bearing. It's a nice close up of that bearing. And we can now see how that bearing pulls off. So that's a little needle bearing right there. And that sits right there on the end of that main shaft. 
And then the input shaft sits right on there. And we can see that as it rides on that bearing, it can turn independently of the other shaft. The other thing to make note of is that these gears right here on this main shaft, they can spin independently of the main shaft. So these are riding on bearings. Now, in order to lock this to the main shaft, I slide the synchronizer sleeve over, and now that locks it to the main shaft. So now it turns as one unit. So these are called speed gears, and these are the driven speed gears, and each one of them that's next to a synchronizer is going to be riding on a bearing, turning independently. The synchronizer will lock that gear to the shaft. So it doesn't matter whether it's this one, these two, or these over here. If I want to make this one solid unit, I simply move the synchronizer over and lock it, the input shaft directly to the output shaft. So if I move this synchronizer this way, I will lock the input directly to the output shaft. Now it will turn as a one-to-one -one or solid unit. So we can lock these two up together. If I, turn, if I slide the synchronizer back, now the input shaft can turn independently of the output shaft.